In the last video, we have discussed about, line focus principle. And understood, reduction of anode angle improved, image quality, by reducing geometrical unsharpness. Also demonstrated, how line focus principle caused, reduction of X-ray field size. Here, we will be discussing, another disadvantage of line focus principle, known as, the heel effect. Let us analyze, intensity of X-ray across, anode cathode direction. What is absorbed is, the radiation intensity on the cathode side of an, X-ray field is greater, than that on the anode side. The central ray or axis of the, useful beam is an imaginary line generated by, the centermost X-ray in the beam. If the radiation intensity along the central ray, is designated as 100%, then the intensity on the cathode side, may be as high as, 120%, and that on the anode side may be as low as, 70%. This variation of X-ray intensity, across anode cathode direction, is similar to heel in your foot, and named as heel effect. Heel effect is not observed, perpendicular to, anode cathode direction. In order to understand, why this intensity variation is happening, let's consider an X-ray source. This source of X-ray, emits X-rays of same intensity, in all directions. If these X-rays, are to pass through matter, the matter will absorb, a fraction of X-rays. Let's put, varying thicknesses of matter, in different directions. The resulting intensities, of X-rays, beyond these blocks of matter, will not be equal. The direction in which thickness is more, attenuation will be more. And higher the attenuation, lesser will be the intensity. So, intensity of X-rays will be lower, in the direction of, higher thickness. Exactly, same thing happens, in an X-ray tube, causing intensity variation or heel effect. Consider this blue dot, a point inside X-ray target. X-rays produced from this point, need to first get out of, target itself. Some of the X-rays will suffer absorption, in the target itself, before reaching target surface. X-rays emerging in anode side, will have to overcome larger thickness, than in cathode direction. Larger thickness along anode side, will cause higher absorption of X-rays, leading to lower intensity. X-rays traveling cathode side, will have to go through lesser thickness. Hence intensity will be higher, along cathode side. Whatever may be the point of X-ray origin, inside a target, it will have to overcome, larger thickness along anode side than, cathode side. So we observe higher intensity along cathode direction. Now we change anode angle. You can observe, as anode angle increases, the difference of path length along anode side and cathode side decreases. So, the difference in absorption or, intensity variation will reduce with, anode angle. We can say, with increasing anode angle, heel effect reduces. Line focus principle, advocates for lower anode angle to reduce, geometrical unsharpness. So, reducing anode angle, 
as per line focus principle causes, heel effect. Heel effect with field size changes. For this collimator setting, the intensity variation is 50%. Now, we will reduce the collimator opening along anode cathode direction. The intensity variation will be 30%. If we further reduce the collimator opening, the intensity variation will further reduce to 15%. So, if we are imaging lesser area, we will be using lesser field size, hence lesser heel effect. Variation in heel effect with source to image distance. This is a point at which X-rays are produced. Central axis of X-ray beam can be drawn as our X-ray cassette or detector is placed at a certain source to image distance or SID. You can observe. The distance from X-ray source to film, is not the same at all points, in anode cathode direction. The distance in anode direction is, less than, central axis. And distance in cathode direction is, more than, central axis. That means, X-rays need to travel longer distance, to reach cathode side than anode side, at the film level. Keeping this in mind. Let's understand how it affects relative intensity. Relative intensity in anode direction equals Intensity in anode direction divided by Intensity in central axis Say 75% or 75 units divided by 100 units. Now, if distance of film from focal spot is increased there will be decrease in intensity, in both central axis and anode direction due to inverse square law. But, decrease of intensity will be more in central axis than, anode direction, as distance is more in central axis. Say, intensity decreased by 10 units to 65 in anode direction and by 19 units in central axis to 81 units. So the relative intensity will be 80%. Here. With increased SID, intensity has increased relatively from 75% to 80% for anode side. Similarly, relative intensity of X-rays, on cathode side. Intensity in cathode direction, divided by, intensity at central axis. Let it be 120 units by 100 unit at film level. As SID increases, X-rays will have to travel more distance along cathode side than the central axis. Higher distance along cathode side will cause higher reduction of intensity. Say a reduction of 31 units, along cathode to 89 units. And a reduction of, 19 units in central axis, to 81 units. Ultimately, at cathode side intensity will be, from 120 to 110 percent. So, with increase in source to image distance, film to X-ray source distance increases more in, cathode side than anode side. This unequal increase in distance, reduces heel effect. A non-uniform X-ray beam, if used for imaging, can cause artifacts or noise in the radiograph. The difference in human anatomy can be used to manage intensity variation in X-ray beam. For example, thorax anatomy is thicker at diaphragm than upper thorax region. More X-rays are required for thicker lower thorax than upper thorax. If we keep, cathode of tube, towards thicker lower thorax. This means, we are directing, more X-rays at lower thorax, than upper thorax. Due to higher thickness, more X-rays will be attenuated in lower thorax. 
a rather uniform exposure to film, will produce better image. As you know, films are sensitive to, a limited range of exposures as per H and D curve. So, the difference in X-ray beam intensity, which could have caused noise in a radiograph, is countered by anatomy differences. In the abdomen, anatomy is thicker towards upper abdomen, and thinner at, lower abdomen or pelvic area. So, we need to keep, cathode of X-ray tube superiorly. By doing so, thicker upper abdomen will receive higher intensity of, X-rays, and due to higher thickness, upper abdomen will attenuate more, comparison to lower abdomen. Ultimately, the cassette or image receptor will receive, a rather uniform beam of X-rays. A uniform X-ray beam, will produce uniform optical density, to be better visible to human eye. In film screen radiography, anode cathode orientation of X-ray tube, is significant to obtain, distinguishable optical density, on films. But, tube orientation is less significant in digital radiography. A uniform beam can produce, an uniform grayscale value on a, DR image. But due to heel effect, cathode side of DR detector will receive more X-rays. The non-uniform X-ray beam due to heel effect, can cause widening, in cathode side of a digital image. With use of computer algorithms, the individual pixel value of a DR detector, can be manipulated to produce, a final image for an uniform beam. Flat fielding image processing methods are employed, to make such corrections. This collimator has shorter opening along, anode cathode direction. And, wider opening in, perpendicular direction. The fan beam generated from this tube, will not have heel effect along wide fan angle. It rather will be present in, shorter beam direction or patient Z axis. This orientation eliminates, heel effect induced spectral changes, along the fan angle, which is important for, better image quality. Please like, share, subscribe and keep, all notifications on for updates.